Raise your hand if you think you're not good at math. Raise your hand if you're not good at drawing. Raise your hand if you find it really hard to analyze poetry. Thanks, you can put your hands down. As a teacher, I've heard comments like these many times before, and I myself have made claims like these many times. Specifically, I used to say that I was bad at math. But tonight, I'm going to tell you that I was wrong, that you're wrong. These things that we think we're not good at, we actually have the ability to change. But you have to want to, and you have to put yourself in situations to be able to, and it takes repeated practice. But the potential is there. You do have the power to shape your own mind. Let me tell you how your brain works. We'll start with neurons. Neurons are nerve cells that are present all over your body. Scientists estimate that there are 80 billion of them just in your brain, and many times that number in your muscles, nerves, everywhere. Neurons send messages about the world inside you and the world outside you through your nervous system. Your brain is a part of your central nervous system. It controls basic life functions, such as respiration and heartbeat, as well as responses to your environment, such as danger and stress, as well as obviously producing and processing thoughts and experiences. Neurons work in this way. Some kind of stimuli, a pinprick or the taste of a tomato or your mother calling your name, generates an electrical signal in the neuron. Then, through a complex chemical process, this electrical signal results in the end of the neuron, its axon terminals, releasing small packets of chemical molecules called neurotransmitters, across what we call the synaptic gap. These packets of chemical molecules, then, are received by an area on the next neuron called the dendrites. The neurotransmitters activate receptors on the next neuron's dendrites and initiate another electrical signal, and the process continues. This is called neural processing, or neural transmission. In, and scientists estimate that, they, that it happens at speeds of over 300 kilometers per hour for the neurons in your brain. Indeed, this process is happening right now to all of us, to all of you, but on a scale of several million neur neurons interacting at once. The process isn't linear. It's much more complex. Instead of a chain of neur neurons, it's more like a web or a community of neurons sending messages in many different directions simultaneously. In response to stimuli from the world around you, the sound of my voice, the feel of your chair, and the world within you, your hunger or your excitement tonight, about tonight as well. Scientists are still working to understand just how precisely these communities of neurons work to produce consciousness or personality or any of the other varied and very complex ways that humans understand and interact with the world. But we do have a clear understanding of how neurons work in terms of learning. Now, when you learn something, and I don't mean just learning in school, when you're a baby and you learn how to put food in your mouth, or you're a toddler and you learn how to climb out of your crib, or you're older and you're learning how to ride a bike, what's happening is that the parts of your brain involved in each instance. In the case of riding a bike, the visual processing part, the spatial processing part, and the part that maintains balance, for example, are communicating with and forming connections to each other. A neural pathway is being created. A, a sequence of neurons, or rather a community of neurons, a web of neurons, is being created and made more efficient by your use, your practice of this process over time. It's called long-term potentiation. The more that you perform the action, the more receptors that the dendrites and the receiving neuron actually are created. And as you use a neural pathway, the more efficient it becomes. The process gets easier and faster for you to do. The more you ride your bike, the better you get at riding a bike. Hmm. However, and this is important, this change is not permanent. If you stopped riding your bike, the receptors would get reabsorbed and the neural pathway would become less and less efficient. You might be able to still ride a bike, say if you picked it up again in 20 years time, and that would be okay, but your ease and facility of riding your bike would not be as good as it was when you're practicing it more often. This is an amazingly adaptive phenomenon. It's how your brain makes you better at doing the things that you do. You get better at riding a bike or playing soccer or analyzing poetry. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, however, sometimes it can be destructive. These patterns of thought that we create and then repeat and then our brain more easily follows can sometimes be harmful to our thinking and harmful to our lives. Think back to the statement you raised your hand for at the beginning of this talk. What happened that made you decide that you're bad at math? 
or drawing or poetry? How do those patterns of thought get created and then repeated and then fixed in your brain? Let's see this in action. Let's say you're eight years old at school, you're learning your time tables. Your teacher gives you timed tests, tests of memorization and speed, and you do very, very poorly on them. Each time you take a test, you get stressed and overwhelmed, and that interferes with your mathematical thinking, and so you do poorly. You get a bad grade, and so that causes you to resent the test, the teacher, your own performance, and the math even more. What's happening is that you're creating a neural pathway in your brain, connecting math with anxiety or even inability. The more you repeat this process, the more this neural pathway is created. Over time, maybe you start to say to yourself, I'm no good at math. Maybe your grades reflect this. Maybe this process repeats itself again for years and years in school. And eventually you put less effort into your math classes, believing that it would make no difference. That was me. And that was my process in thinking about, about math until about the age of 16. But around then, I realized I was doing myself a disservice by believing I was no good at math. I didn't want to be someone who had walled herself off from a whole area of thinking, a whole way of understanding the world. I didn't want to be someone who could probably do something but wasn't worth the effort to put my time in to get better at. I didn't want to identify myself as someone who always would associate math with inability or doing, doing math as impossibility. So I worked to find ways to make myself more open to math. I hung out with friends who believed that math is beautiful. I, by exposing myself to new situations, um, by exposing myself to new situations and connecting math with new and positive experiences, I could find ways to make myself more open to math. I could look for ways to access math that were more interesting or easier for me through art, through discussion, through other ways of thinking. And by doing so, I could re-change those neural pathways. With everything that you do, you're always shaping, oh, sorry, but my process was an easier instant. Uh, at times, I definitely said to myself, this is not worth it, I can't do this, I'm no good. And that may happen to anyone who's trying to reframe their ways of thinking. Your neural pathways need to be rewired, but they can only do so if you actively attempt new connections. It takes putting yourself into new and possibly uncomfortable situations and continued awareness of your thinking, both your habitual responses and your thoughts in the moment, in order to change your neural pathways and change your patterns of thought. With everything you do, you're always shaping and reshaping your brain. Your, your encounters, your experiences, your thoughts and habits and behaviors are creating neural pathways. And your repetition of these thoughts and behaviors is reinforcing them. But your brain is flexible and you do have the ability to shape it. You can find new encounters. You can put yourself in new experiences. You can find new ways to access things. You can create new encounters with math or poetry or language or even the ways you think about yourself. It takes time and effort. Change is slow, but we are capable. You do have the power to shape your own mind.